If you and I know the way, why aren't we guiding people the way, the truth, and the way that they can have life and have it in abundance? Are we attracted to Jesus because of what and who He is? Accomplished to draw man back into ourselves, to draw them out of the hands of the enemy, to bring them back to your glory. Is there any other way? I want to show you guys this quick video. So if you guys watch the video that we're going to show now.
Good morning and happy Father's Day to all the fathers and the future fathers. Amen? Amen. It's awesome to be here this morning. Praise the Lord. I heard uh, Pastor George came in last Sunday and was good. Amen. Did you guys enjoy having Pastor George? Yes. Pastor George is a very, very good friend of mine and he always brings a good, good message, an anointed message. Thank you, Jesus. So awesome to see everybody this morning. We had a great weekend last weekend. We had the Jesus March in, in, uh, in Juarez. It was very, very nice. It was, I mean, don't even have words to explain it, but it was good. You know, but I want to acknowledge Maria because 12 years ago, the Lord gave her, told her to do something and she did it. And she had so much pushback, so much pushback. So many people just came against her and saying, oh, you're crazy and well, she is crazy, but she's crazy for the Lord. You know what I'm saying? But when I met her, that's when I met her. She came to our church when we were downtown, and she's like, look, this is Father told me this and told me that, and here's a flyer. If you guys want to be part of it, fine. If you don't, then it's your loss. I'm like, I was a new pastor at the time, you know. I'm like, who's this lady, you know? But throughout the years, I've... I've grown to love Maria dearly. Um, we all have. She's, she's an amazing woman, but because of her faithfulness, last weekend I was able to witness something that nobody thought could be done. We went into Juarez, Mexico and broke that religious, that religious cloud, that religious spirit that was just hovering over the city, you know, and, and giving people an opportunity to repent and turn their lives to Christ. So it was just an awesome time that we went and, and then uh, had an opportunity to go and, and preach at uh, Pastor Jaime's church in Juarez on Sunday. And we represented Jesus well. Amen. So one day he's going to be here bringing the word as well. But praise God. So awesome. God is good. God is on the throne. I just want to wish everybody happy Father's Day. Hope you guys have a good day and you get to eat whatever you want. <laughs> Amen. And Brother Scott, don't forget, I like chocolate too, so just in case. I'm just throwing that out there, you know what I'm saying? I try to pick in at things like this and my, my wife keeps slapping my hand away. And I'm like, well, you didn't get nothing for me? So I'm like... See, the thing is, is that, is that when, when my wife buys something for the men in the church, she always buys something for me. So I'm always like winning. But this time, I don't know what happened. I don't know if she forgot or what. But anyway. Thank you, brother. Oh, she's taking me on a date. Praise God. I guess that's better. Amen. So, and we are also excited that this year... You know, like around three months ago, or a couple of months ago, the Lord spoke to me and, and, and told me that He wanted me to postpone the men's conference this year. And knowing me, I'm like fighting it, and I'm like, no, because we've had it every single year. And so I talked to my wife, and, and I'm like, man, I hope it's from the Lord. I mean, I don't want it to be another voice, you know, but because... Me and him, I had that relationship with him. I was able to recognize his voice, and he was able to confirm it to me. So I came to Pastor Ed, and he was very encouraging to me. He said, you know what? If this is what the Lord wants, and this is what we're going to do. But when I went to Juarez, the Lord gave me a vision while I was inside of the church of packed with men. And I'm like, Really? So after service, we went to dinner, we went to lunch, and I told the pastor of our men's ministry and, and stuff like that, and, and I explained to him, you know, the vision that the Lord gave me, and I said, would you be interested in, ha in hosting it here? And he's on board. So I'm like, really? I said, I'll, I'll uh, give you a call this week, and I'll give you the for sure dates. 
So now I understand and, and know why the Lord did what he did. You know, so praise God. It's such an awesome time when men come together, men of God, for one sole purpose, and that's to lift up the name of Jesus. But there's another greater thing is that when a man humbles himself before Almighty God and, and really repents and has that transformation of life, that transformation of, of who he is, you know, because our identity isn't on who we were or how we were raised. Once we become born again, our identity is in Christ, in Christ alone, only in Christ. And so many of us, we're like, well, this is the way I am, and this is the way I was, and that's the way you were. But those that are in Christ, Jesus are a new creation. We're new creatures. We have to learn everything brand new again. We need to learn how to speak. We need to learn how to act. And a lot of us can use... We have to relearn how to act because we didn't act so very good, right? Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we give you thanks and praise, Father God, this morning for your word. Father, we thank you for your truth. Heavenly Father, this morning I just pray that your Holy Spirit will just come and have his way and, and just really penetrate our hearts. As we leave here today, Father God, that... that um, that we would be transformed. And even though this message is directed towards men, Father God, I just pray that, that as, as the word comes out, that your Holy Spirit will just shift it and change it and do whatever it needs to do so that the women in this place this morning can be impacted as well. So, Father, we thank you. We praise you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. You know, today is a very special day. Uh, <clears throat> you know, my dad went to be with the Lord uh, a, little over, uh, a little over a year and a half ago, but today marks two years, two years that, uh, that I baptized my dad. I baptized my dad, and then a couple months later, you know, the Lord called him home. So to me, it's probably been one of the biggest honors and privileges that I have had in my entire life was baptizing my dad. And just see the transformed life that my dad has had since he gave his life to the Lord. So amazing. And when I was watching that video, man, it's just hard to, to hold it in, you know what I'm saying? Because you see the love of a father, the love of, of what fathers are supposed to emulate. He was emulating God's love for his son. And I see my dad and I see the struggles that my dad had being an immigrant, not only being an immigrant, but being an illegal immigrant coming into this country and everything that he had to sacrifice so that we wouldn't have to go through the same stuff that he went through. So that, that's why my father will always be my hero because he was just a man that, that just... Everything he did, he did it for our benefit. Everything he did, he did it for his family. So praise God. So fathers play a critical role in the lives of their children. They are called teachers, providers, disciplinaries, and living examples of God. It's a tall order from the greatest father of them all our Lord and Savior. When God created man, He created us for a purpose. He created us to be able to lead and guide our families. He created us so that we can raise our children. But nowadays, something happened down the road. Something happened down the road in these men's lives that things changed. The priorities changed. I've met so many amazing single women that are raising their children by themselves and they're doing the very best that they can. But see, there's a reason why a father should be included into the household. There's a reason why a father needs to be there to, to, to be the disciplinary, to be the one that, that brings go left or go right, go straight, right? Really, Sister Brooklyn, you're going to start again? Yeah, we all missed you. 
So throughout Scripture, God reveals Himself to us in His Word as our Heavenly Father. Looking at that video, you see God, you see the, the, the valleys that we've been in, right? You and I, we've been through so many valleys, and we're probably going to continue going through valleys. But see, in those times, it's when God picks us up and He carries us. He lets us know that He is our Father. Even though our Heavenly Father, our, our earthly Father is gone, or for those of us that don't have an uh, earthly Father and they've already went to be with the Lord, God will adopt us into His family. He becomes our Father. He becomes our guide. He becomes our leader. And He will carry us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. See, the Bible tells us that as our perfect Father, God loves us unconditionally. There's nothing that you've ever done that God will not forgive. See, but when, when He forgives us, God is so gracious, He is so merciful that He forgives us, but it's time to walk away and turn the other way. See, because we have to have a true repentive heart. We have to be willing to be submissive to the Lord and say, Lord, you know what, I messed up. I made a mistake. Please forgive me. Now do a U-turn and go the other way. See, but, but we, we sometimes, we're so caught into ourselves. We allow the things of the world to be our influence. And believe me, you turn on the TV nowadays, there is so much influence and they're targeting our children. So fathers, it's time to step it up. It's time to step it up as, as not only a father, but a man of God. A man that wants, that should lead their family in the path of righteousness, in the path of holiness. But it's so easy for us just to say words, just to say, this is who we are, but doing it is another thing. Because I think you and I, we've met so many people that have gave a bad witness on who God is. We're in church and we're uh, hallelujah and we're praising God and then we go home and we're a totally different person. Fathers, it's time to wake up. If we want to lead our children, if we want to lead our families, it starts to following the greatest leader of them all and that's our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When we think about God as our Father, these truths also provide us with some principles to live by as earthly fathers. God has entrusted men with a great responsibility. You and I have a great responsibility. Some of us think of it as a burden, and some of us think of it as an opportunity. Anytime we go through valleys, anytime we go through situations in our life, Think of it not as a negative, but as a positive. What is it that you want me to learn from this valley, Lord? How can I grow spiritually? How can I increase my relationship with you? How can I love my wife like I'm supposed to love my wife? How can, am I supposed to love my, my children as I'm supposed to love them and guide them? See, even the best of earthly fathers may not fulfill all of these responsibilities perfectly every day, but they are biblical characteristics that we can strive to achieve daily by submitting ourselves to God each day and allowing Him to do this through us by the person and power of the Holy Spirit. You and I can't be the men that God has called us to be without the Lord. Believe me, because I tried. It doesn't work. How can we continue to, to live the same kind of life and say that we are serving the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords if we're living a life that's contrary to what He's teaching us? So let's look at some principles that we need to live by. Godly fathers love their family. And by saying loving their family, 
It doesn't mean like spend 20 hours a day at work. We think, well, I'm providing for my family, but I'm not leading them to, to the scriptures. I'm not leading them to Bible study. I'm not praying with them. I'm neglecting that area of my life, but I'm providing a roof over their head. Let me tell you, church, that that's not enough. But so many of us, we get caught up in our work ethic and we're like, well, I need to work. I need to make all this money so that I can guide my family and so that I can provide for my family. See, God will always provide when you honor Him. Honoring your family and raising your family and leading your family in righteousness, God is going to honor that especially us as men. See, in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul writes that husbands should love their wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. We live so much selfish lifestyles right now that it's all about me, even for a married couple. He's like, what's in it for me, Lord? If there's nothing in it for me, I'm not going to pursue those things because we're thinking of ourselves. Believe me, my wife's a witness of the way I used to live my life. It was all about moi, okay? Got to make sure my hair was done. I did have hair one time. You know, I used to use that hairspray Aquanet. That leaves your hair all messed up afterwards, you know? But see, but back then, it was all about me. It wasn't about her. And vice versa. That's the kind of life. But this is what society is teaching us. It's all about me. As long as you're happy, you're good. Forget everybody else. Do you know that, that the past... How many years has it been since 2007? 14? Well, okay. Since I gave my life to the Lord and my wife and I got back together and, and we got remarried and stuff, we have purposed to live selfless lives. Really, really purposed to live selfless lives because when we purpose to live a selfless life, guess what? We're able to please each other and we're able to fulfill each other. And then you don't have to be going to the so much times, like arguing and fighting and, and all these things that we're good at. The outback ministry, my wife calls it. See, that is a love that is selfless, sacrificial, just like Jesus. Despite our sin, despite how we were going to reject the Lord, He still went to the cross. See, but at any moment... He could have stopped and said, you know what? They don't deserve it. They don't deserve my sacrifice. They don't deserve my forgiveness. They don't deserve all this. But then again, you and I, we're telling that to our neighbor. They don't deserve my friendship. They don't deserve my forgiveness. My tío and my tía, they don't deserve it. I was there too. See, whether we deserve it or not, Jesus gave it to us freely. Of course we don't deserve it. The people that have betrayed you don't deserve it. But see, you're not living for yourself anymore. You're living for the Lord. Now it's different. You know that, that forgiveness can bring healing to one's body physically. Not only spiritually, my wife knows, and I'm a, I'm a witness to it. Can I have a witness? Yeah. I've always wanted to say that in church. <laughs> Number two. See, I'm, I'm wearing my close-up glasses 
Now my four glasses are right there. It's just like blurry like that. But it looks like there's more people. <laughs> Number two. Godly fathers lead their family. In the Old Testament, Joshua made a strong and clear commitment about following God when he declared. In Joshua 24, 15. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. How many of us can stand tall on that truth? How many of us can say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. What does that look like? Anything that's unpleasing to the Lord is going to take place in this home. That includes alcohol. Drugs. Fornication. All these things. Because we're making a declaration to the world. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You know, they saw these plaques. They're so popular everywhere. That says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Even the unbeliever will buy one of these plaques because it looks pretty. But do we really understand and know what it means, what it signifies? We're making a declaration to our neighbor, to anybody that's going to enter our home, saying, hey, stop warning, because as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. See, we must not neglect the calling and responsibility to provide spiritual leadership in the home. We have to take time to lead our families. For so many families nowadays, you know, the, the wife wakes up the children on Sunday morning, gets the children ready, and the father's still sleeping. And it's the wife saying, come on, let's go. Come on, and she keeps going to the bedroom and, come on, babe, honey, wake up. It's already, church starts in 30 minutes. They're like, oh, I don't really feel like going today. I work hard. We always have an excuse why not to fellowship with other men. We always have an excuse why we shouldn't be doing the things that God has called us to do. And we wonder why our families are going chaotic. Because us, as a spiritual leader of our home, we're allowing it to happen. And I was hoping to do a more loving and caring Father's Day message to you men. But we have to take responsibility for our families. Because think of the society that we live in. If you go to the store and you look on the book rack, it's not families in the front page anymore. It's mom with children. Where's the dad? Society has seriously taken us out of the picture. Like if we're not important, but God thinks we're very important. That's why he created us first. We have to take time to lead our families in the ways of the Lord. And you know what? It's not always going to be perfect. It's not always going to be easy. But it's very, very important that we understand what is our role in our family. For those women that are single, start praying that God would send you that man of God for you that's going to help you, that's going to lead you, that's going to protect you, that you're going to feel protected. Not somebody that's going to take you away from your faith and somebody that's going to, to, to make all these excuses and, and then you thinking that everything's going to change once you get married because things just get worse. The Bible says that we must not be unequally yoked. So we got to make sure before we take that step that we have the same belief system. Don't say, oh, I believe that this is what God sent me and I believe that I'm going to be the answer for him getting saved. You know what? Pray for them. Pray for whatever, but you need to run. Because men will say and do whatever it is that you want to get what they want. If you guys don't remember, I'm a man.
Believe me that I pray, my wife and I pray for all of you in here daily. Daily. Because it's very, very important that that's what we start to pray for. And say, Lord, I'm not going to, I am worthy. I am your princess, Lord. I'm not going to settle for whatever comes through the door. And if they're not husband material, don't play the game and and date for five, six months. Just cut it off. We don't date as a, as a, as a, like a hobby. We date because I can literally see this person as my husband or wife. So lead your family. Number three. Godly fathers provide for their family. There are many verses and scriptures in the Bible that point to God as our provider. But perhaps the most famous one is Philippians 4.19 in which Paul writes, And my God will supply all your needs according to His riches and glory in Christ Jesus. In the same way that God provides for our physical, spiritual, and emotional needs, we should strive to do the same for our families. But don't get mixed up with working all the time as providing. We need to provide spiritual care. We need to provide that love. We're not just providing an income so that we can live inside of a house and have a roof over our head. We have to provide for all of the above, but we have to have a balance. We have to have that balance. Say, man, the Lord has blessed me with such an amazing job. I'm making all kinds of money now. But then again, my spiritual life is dying because I have no more fellowship because I'm always working. So then you tell me if that was from God or or from the devil trying to keep you away from the things of God and try to disguise it as a blessing because these things take place, these things happen. I was one person that, man, I love to work. I mean, over time, call me, I'm there. I loved it. Why? Because of the income. And my excuse was always, man, I'm providing for my family. But you know, when I became born again, when I became a believer in Christ, I still fulfilled my obligation at work. I still did the things that I needed to do. But I never missed church. Even if there were days I'd gone without sleep, I never missed fellowship because I know how much I needed it. We're like, man, I've been working all day. I worked graveyard last night, and and man, I and then I had to work today, and then man, I, I'm not gonna go to work today. I, I mean, to church, it's just I'm too tired. What if Jesus was was carrying that cross and he just bent down in his knees and says, Father, I'm too tired. I can't do it anymore. What would have happened to us? But we have to stop making excuses. If I were to give you guys my work schedule, you guys would probably flip out. But I'm not doing it because it's, there's no need. But you and I have to stop making excuses, speaking to the man and saying, I got to show up. I got to show up because I need to continue to learn how God wants me to lead my family and to provide for my family and to love my family. Godly fathers impart wisdom. How can we impart wisdom if we're always working? Wisdom comes from God. If we're never seeking the scriptures, if we're never seeking His word, if we're never seeking Him, how can we provide wisdom to our families that's going to help them to grow spiritually? That's going to help them to grow 
in a way and to avoid so many mishaps just like you and I were in. Right? Wisdom is not going through the storm. Wisdom is learning from the persons that have gone through the storm before you. That's wisdom. We know that God's holy inspired word is the ultimate source of wisdom and truth. Deuteronomy 6 instructs us to impress God's truth upon the hearts of our children and instruct them as we rise up. Sit at home, travel down the road, and lie down. Look for ways to impart God's truth through the daily scriptures, through the daily devotions. We have to lead our families. We have to impart that wisdom that God has allowed us to have. Isn't God awesome to show us these things? I think to have that responsibility that God has given us as being a man is a great responsibility. I think that us as men should not take lightly. Maybe I haven't been the best father growing up. Maybe I haven't been the best father the past 20 years. But today's a brand new day. God gives us an opportunity to change things around, to turn things around. Everything can happen brand new today. Godly fathers provide correction. Hebrews 12 reminds us that God always disciplines us out of love. And we must strive to do the same with our children. Paul also encourages us, encourages fathers not to provoke or antagonize our children to anger, but to bring them up in discipline and instruction of the Lord. My dad was a good disciplinary, like very good. So good that our neighbors wanted to call 911, if you know what I mean. But look, I mean, I was a little bit, went off a little bit. But see, we need to be corrected. See, because if we're not corrected of our things that we're doing, how are we ever going to know that they're wrong? If somebody doesn't come and correct us in love, we're going to continue doing the same thing, even though it's wrong, but sometimes we don't understand what you understand or maybe the wisdom that you have. So we have to come to the brother or the sister in love and say, hey, we need to kind of go this other direction because of this and because of that, because this is what the Lord says, this is what the scriptures say. I remember <clears throat> growing up in the second grade. We used to go with my mom to clean offices, and she used to clean offices and stuff, and we used to go. But I remember in the second grade, my friend came and told me, he says, hey, he says, let me pierce your ear. And I'm like, really? He's like, yeah. So we put a clip on my ear all day to numb, kind of numb it. So he ended up putting a needle through it. Well, I got in trouble at school. Kids won't even get in trouble for that these days. So I got in trouble at school. They sent me to the principal's office and they gave me a slip. And the principal told me, he said, Alfonso, I need your dad to sign it. And I'm like, my mom couldn't sign it? Because my mom would sometimes let us get away with things, right? So I was dreading. But you know what? Me, I had the earring in my ear even when I got home. I don't know what's, what I was thinking. I wasn't thinking. I was just thinking of the whooping my dad was going to give me. And sure enough, he gave me a whipping. That even to this day, that I can make my own decisions, I will not do it because I believe that it's going to hurt me big time. But see, little things like that, nowadays, it would be normal. It would be normal, but back then, things like that were normal. 
Nowadays, it just don't, it doesn't matter. Godly fathers demonstrate forgiveness. How many of us has it been so hard to forgive someone? It's difficult. It's hard. Because we feel we're, we have so much pain. And people have caused us so much pain. But look at all the pain that we caused the Lord. When we were living our own way, when we were living in the gutter. It's not because He put us there. It's because we put ourselves there. He's been there waiting for us with his stretched arms, waiting for us to just come so that he can embrace us. But he gave us a choice. Let's look at the parable of the prodigal son in Luke 15. See, Luke 15 gives us a picture of what heart of our Heavenly Father is like. After the son returns home, Having squandered much of his father's wealth, the father runs to him, embraces him, forgives him, and restores him to his place in the family. What a beautiful picture of what God does for us. May we strive to model that picture of forgiveness within our own families. You know, there's times that we just have to release our children to the Lord and say, Lord, they're on your watch now. You do what, what you need to do, but just protect them. But there's going to be that day when they come back home and you're going to forget about everything. You're just going to be so happy that you've seen your son or your daughter. You're like, you know what, Lord? I'm willing to start all over because that's the love of a father. That's the love of a mother. I don't care what they've done to me. I don't care what they've said about me. This is my seed. This is my son. This is my daughter. Prayer is powerful. Prayer is so powerful only and when we end it in the power name, powerful name of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to close with this. Perhaps you are burdened by guilt because of what's taking place. Maybe you didn't have a good relationship with your father. And now, and now that's trickling in to having that same kind of relationship with our children. But you know what? I would do anything. I would do anything to have one more embrace of mine. So why are we going to live a life that's full of pain and, and just, you know what? We've all said things, we've all done things that maybe we're not proud of. But if God can forgive us, if He can forgive our mistakes, if He can forgive those things that have kept us bound, why can't we forgive them? Regardless of what's taking place, I was talking to my wife last night and I said, man, <clears throat> I said, I would do anything. I'll do anything to be able to embrace my father. You know, even though <clears throat> I know without a shadow of a doubt that we will be reunited one, one of these days, 
we just miss him, you know. His jokes, his character. Just to the restroom. And he didn't want to disturb. See, but who are we to withhold that from somebody else? That pain, that for unforgiveness that maybe we carry. We, we tend to forget where we come from. We tend to forget what we've gone through. These days, what people need is, is just an embrace from the Lord. Regardless of what's taking place. You know, throughout the years, <clears throat> so many things have happened and so many... Relationships have been damaged. But through this time, God is still on the throne. He wants us, He wants to give us an opportunity to turn that bitterness into forgiveness. To turn that anger into forgiveness. God wants to forgive us. He wants to restore us. And there's even some broken relationships that He wants to restore as well within our own household. You know, if you still have your dad and you've been upset with him because he brought the, he bought the wrong kind of milk, let it go. Let it go. Because, man, when they're not here, <clears throat> that's when you wish you can just embrace them. But this morning, I want us to look at our perfect Heavenly Father for comfort and strength so that we can be those amazing godly fathers and lead our children and lead our families. And you know what? When we mess up, let's dust ourselves off and get back up and let's go for it more again. Let's don't continue to kick ourselves and say, man, there's so many things that we could have changed. There's so many things that we could have done different. See, the enemy, the devil, has a good way of kicking us when we're down, when we're hurting. So we can't stay down that long. We have to get back up. We have to tie our shoes again and dust our pants off and let's go for it again. But when we forgive, we're not only releasing them, but we're releasing ourselves from prison. It's like holding unforgiveness is like holding us hostage of being able to receive everything that the Lord has given us. Amen. Amen. Isn't God good? Let's give God a round of applause this morning. Amen. But as I close, I want to do this. I want to call up all the men, all the fathers, and we're going to anoint them and we're going to pray over them. And we're just going to believe God that God's going to lead them and guide them in such a way. So I want all the women just to just extend your hands. Go ahead and stand up and let me have all the men come forth so that we can pray. I see your oil, please.
I just bless them, you know, because I'm pretty hard on them most of the year, and let's just bless them today. Amen. Let's just believe that God's, let's just believe God's going to do something in their lives, and and if there's brokenness within their lives, let's pray that uh, God will bring restoration. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Father God, I just thank you so much, Heavenly Father. Father God, I lift up these brothers to you right now, Father God, and I lift up these men, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Father God. I lift up these fathers, Heavenly Father. Right now, Father God, I just pray blessings upon them, Father God. I thank you for, for their lives, and I thank you for what's taking place, Father God. Father God, if there is any brokenness or any relationships that have been broken, Father God, I just pray right now, Father God, restoration, Father God, if there's any any bitterness or any unforgiveness held against their fathers, Heavenly Father, I just pray right now, Father God, that they would release it to them, Heavenly Father, release forgiveness, Father God, in the name of Jesus, so that you can set them free in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. Father God, we know, Father God, that uh, apart from you, we can do nothing, Heavenly Father. Father God, you have given us a task, a great task, Heavenly Father. Father God, I just pray that from this day forward, Father God, that we would fulfill that task, Father God. Father God, if our fathers, if our earthly fathers are still living and, and there's been something that, that has caused us not to talk for a long time, Heavenly Father, I just pray right now, Father God, that as we leave here today that we would pick up that phone and ask for forgiveness, Heavenly Father. Because sometimes it's us and them, Heavenly Father. Father, I just pray that you would bless each and every man here this morning, Father God. That you would continue to lead them and guide them into righteousness, Father God. That you would surround them by God-fearing God men, Heavenly Father, that can encourage them to, to lead their families and to lead their children, Heavenly Father. And most of their children are already grown, Heavenly Father. And maybe there's been some, some stuff that has taken place there, Father God. But right now I pray in the name of Jesus, restoration and healing, Father God. Father God, because the children deserve to be healed just as these fathers deserve to be healed, Father God. So, Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just pray, Father God, that you would protect them, protect their minds, protect their hearts, Heavenly Father, protect their eyes, Heavenly Father, that everything they see would be to glorify you, everything they hear to glorify you, everything that, that, that they allow in is to glorify you, Heavenly Father. So, Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, Father God, I just pray blessings upon them, Heavenly Father. I just pray that you would... Use them in such a mighty way, Father God, for the expansion of your kingdom, Heavenly Father. You have called us for such a time as this, Father God. Father God, and I just pray that, that, that uh, through dreams and visions, Heavenly Father, that you would just give these men their, their calling, Heavenly Father. No matter how old or how young, Father God, but you have called these men for a greater purpose than ourselves, Heavenly Father. Father, and that all these things would be fulfilled, Heavenly Father, by the power of your name, by the power of the Holy Spirit, Father God. So right now, Father God, we all come in agreement. Your word says, when two or more are gathered, there you are in the midst of us, Heavenly Father. We believe that you're here. We believe your Holy Spirit is really touching us and, and, and healing us as we speak. So Father God, we just thank you. We praise you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. We're glad that you tuned in. I pray and hope that the message that you just heard was a blessing to you. You know, the Word of God comes in and transforms our lives from the inside out. What an amazing opportunity. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. Right now, if you've never given your life to Jesus, I want to give you that opportunity right now, and I would be honored uh, to pray with you right now. If you've never given your life to Jesus, just repeat this prayer with me. And... Um, Believing with all of your heart, the Bible says that if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that we will be saved. And the Bible also says that everyone that calls out to the name of the Lord shall be saved. So right now, if you just repeat this prayer with me, say, Heavenly Father, I choose to believe 
that Jesus is the Son of God and that you raised him from the dead to give me new life. So now, Jesus, I repent of my sin. I turn away from, from my wicked way of living. I turn my heart to you. From this day forward, I want to serve you. And I want to do everything that I can to be pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you just pray that prayer right now, I just want to welcome you into the kingdom of God, into his household. If you have a church, I, or you don't have a home church, get plugged into your home church, wherever you may be. If you're in the Albuquerque, New Mexico area, we would love to have you uh, join us for worship here at Majesty Worship Center. Our address is as follows, 3250 Coors Boulevard, Northwest, Suite B, Albuquerque, New Mexico, 87121. We would love to meet you. We would love to, to fellowship with you. So I just pray that you would get plugged into the house of God. God bless you, and thank you for watching.